Hey guys, uh, today I'll be showing you how I edited this image. Uh, this isn't a how-to video, but this is a what I uh, do video. Uh, so to light this image, I used four strobes and one continuous light. Uh, I had a beauty dish boomed uh, just above Beth uh, to light for the face. And then I had a uh, rectangular softbox underneath, uh, just to fill in the shadows, basically like a clamshell setup. And then I had two drip boxes behind her just to like, highlight around the arms and stuff just to make her pop off the background a little bit and then I used a gridded um, green gel on the continuous light to aim at the spikes of her top and any of the reflection -y bits on her uh, like PVC trouser things that she was wearing as you can see in the top corner I used a 1.3 second exposure um, this was so I can take the image, the flash would freeze the motion and I would drag the camera down or whatever way to create the uh, light trails that are reflecting from the spiky top. So uh, this is the finished image, so this is what it looked like afterwards and this is the before. Um, I like to pull the image apart a little bit just so it gives me a bit of leeway um, with editing and then when I uh, colour grade afterwards it will, uh, it will completely change. So normally I um, bring up the shadows a little bit and the blacks and uh, the exposure. I brought up the whites a bit as well just to like bring up uh, some of the light trails and the details out of that. And then um, brought up the highlights as well which helped in this bit. So uh, yeah let's get to editing the image. So uh, here's the uh, edited image that I've already done. Um, what I'm going to do I'm just going to go through all the layers uh, show you what I've done to each bit and then I'll be going through and uh, showing you how I edited the image completely. So uh, I'm just going to turn this one off uh, and as you can see down here uh, this layer one is the spot and blemish um, layer. So as you can see I've uh, removed the air vent on top and then some spots and blemishes on Beth. And then for the next layer I always go for um, frequency separation. Uh, this depends on if uh, the subject I'm shooting has uh, a lot of red patches on their skin. If they do I no would normally do a um, hue saturation layer to get rid of the redness uh, first before I do uh, frequency separation but didn't need to here. So if I turn that one off you can see that I've uh, blended uh, a lot of the transitions in the skin uh, tone and variations. It's essentially what you would do if you were blending makeup on someone's skin. Like when you've done contouring and stuff, you just blend in the edges with a brush. And then same with dodging and burning, I'm just brightening up, creating uh, extra contrast and contouring parts of the skin. Uh, this one here is my color grade layer. Um, I always use a merged layer and then convert it into a um, smart object. Sorry, brain went dead there. Uh, the reason why, if you use any filters on the layer directly, it, um, you can't go back and change anything. So uh, if you create a smart object, you can just double click down here where it says camera raw filter and it reopens camera raw. And then this next one up here is um, just for some grain I added into the image. Uh, I normally do that separately because if I want to change the opacity down here it'll also change the grain but the grain is the one thing I kind of want you know pretty standard across my images so let's uh, crack on so I'm not going to bother uh, uh, going through cleaning up the skin um, here we all know how to use the uh, patch tool uh, if I can click on it with my pen uh, I normally use the uh, healing spot brush uh, or you can use the patch tool I normally just stick with a healing brush tool just to get rid of bits because I like doing things manually. Uh, you can use the patch tool for the bit that was up here. Uh, but, you know, whatever's everyone's preference, to be fair. So, um, let's go on to frequency separation. So, to create this, uh, you would need to create two merge layers. Um, you can press Shift, Control, Alt, and E. And it brings up one, and just do it again to create the second one. Uh, I think it's shift option command on a Mac, but I don't use Mac so I can't remember. 
So, uh, if you have changed the name on layer 4 to low frequency, I'm just going to do LF for short, and then high frequency on the layer 5, HF for short as well. Now, uh, I'm going to uh, go up to filter and create a Gaussian blur. You can also use a medium blur, uh, which pretty much does the same kind of thing. The downside of Gaussian blur is you go too far, you create a bit of fringing. So if I bring it up quite a bit, you can see the, there's a lot of fringing and merging of the uh, different colors. You don't really want that. So what you want to do is if you start off down here and then gradually build up until uh, the details in the skin go away. So about there is fine. Uh, I normally zoom in around the eye because that's for me has a lot the most detail around that part of the skin on the cheek, up here on the uh, eyelids and whatnot. So here you can see a lot of the uh, details gone. Uh, that isn't technically detail, that's just color variation in the highlight. So we don't have to worry about that, which will get blended out in a minute. So once you've done that, press OK. And then select the high frequency layer. We go up to image. Uh, apply image and then make sure you have the low, fr low frequency layer selected and you want to go to add and then invert and then you should see around here uh, the detail from the spikes and from her uh, stretch there. Uh, basically you've created a um, high, fr uh, high pass filter kind of thing um, and then once that's done you press OK and then you change the blend mode on the high frequency layer to linear light. Uh, then I'm, I'll uh, group these and then rename them kind of frequency separation, but I'll just do freak sep for short. So how it works is uh, with the Gaussian blur layer, you've got rid of uh, the detail um, in the image and then you've used that image to subtract the color detail from the high frequency layer. So you're, all you're left is the detail. So to do the actual skin retouching or any retouching on the image, um, you want to use the low frequency layer just for the color because you'll just bl be blending uh, all the uh, color tones together. So um, I'm going to first uh, solo the layer and then I'm going to select my mixer brush. So now you can see uh, there's a lot of the uh, details gone so you can just see the color detail but uh, what I'm going to do first before I do that is I'm going to create a new layer and I'm just going to show you what I'm going to be focusing on so uh, the bits I'm going to be focusing on you can see down here on the chin there's a light patch there a dark patch there and a light patch here I'm going to be blending that together so it's a bit more uh, level so I'll be patching that bit in oh. Let's change the opacity on the brush so yeah, I'll be going around that bit. Um, there's some little variations around this bit of the highlights that I'll just be blending in. Uh, up here, there's a slightly darker patch. I'll just blend the edges around there to make it a bit more consistent. Um, also doing around the nose, around there. And then I'm, you can see here, there's a darker bit on the highlight. I'll be making sure the highlight is a bit more even. Uh, you can say, this bit down here could be the same. There's some uh, variations in the skin tone uh, in the shadow areas underneath her chin. So I'll just be blending that in to be a bit more consistent. And then that'll be kind of the same thing around on the different areas of skin around here. Like this transition. Sorry, I just got the pen the wrong way around. I'm an idiot. So I'll be uh, blending in these bits here. Um, and then kind of the same throughout the other parts of the image like down here as well blending that bit in and then also the redness on the knuckles we're getting rid of that as well cool so these are the things I'll be focusing on uh, as I'm going through uh, again doesn't really have to be perfect um, because you know I want to create a more natural looking image so it doesn't look like I've, re I've really done uh, you know any retouching on it so yeah, let's crack on so uh, I'm just going to start working on this bit here and, uh, and around the eye, just to move some of the colour about.
Uh, one thing you should note when using the mixer brush is that you want to make sure up here you have the uh, clean brush every t uh, every time selected because if you don't, if you say on this section here I was doing this and then I came over here, it would have uh, that color loaded onto the brush and then it would start painting uh, darker areas of the skin over here. So we don't want that. So with that initial pass, I like to zoom out a little bit and then I like to uh, turn on the layers back again and then just toggle the frequency separation layer on and off just so you can see what I've done. Looks good to me. Um, <clears throat> if I want to do a second pass, I normally uh, just keep all the layers on just so I can see what I'm doing and then uh, zoom in. So uh, now I'll uh, go on to my dodging and burning. So uh, for dodging and burning, uh, I normally use two curve layers. Um, I'm just going to use my action and I'll just open the action up to show you what's in there. So for the dodge, I normally set it to screen and then uh, burn multiply. You can just use the curves themselves, uh, but then afterwards make sure you add a um, black layer mask on just to you know hide those changes um, with the uh, brush selected and make sure you have white selected because you know white reveals black conceals I have the flow set to 3% because you know that way you can build up um, I just use it more broadly as opposed to making micro uh, adjustments because obviously I've done uh, skin blending with frequency separation so here it's more kind of semi-global and uh, as opposed to you know the micro ones I've just said so I'm going to be focusing on the areas of brightness um, and then brightening up areas that could be a little bit brighter um, and then <clears throat> be do on the burn adding contrast and contouring like I normally I'll add a bit here I'll add some around on the eyebrow and then around the eye makeup as well with dodging and burning and then you know pr pretty much if it's dark I'll burn it if it's bright I'll dodge it but not too much because you don't want to you know 
make it look a bit weird. So here we go. Uh, remember as well when you're doing dodging and burning, you can also dodge areas of clothes. Um, again, just to bring up more areas of contrast. And you can uh, burn in the darker bits in between, again, just to make them uh, the brighter bits pop. Cool. So um, that's the finished dodge and the burning. Uh, always check afterwards as well by turning the uh, layer on and off just to see what you've done, and just in case you've gone over the you know a bit too much because a lot of people will. Uh, just remember as well you can always change the opacity if you feel you've gone too far. So uh, for the next thing, I normally do a, a bit of uh, color grade. So here we go. Right, uh, for color greening, uh, I normally just uh, create a uh, smart object layer. Um, this being, like I mentioned earlier on, if I want to make any readjustments afterwards, I can just select the layer again uh, and open up whatever filter I was using as opposed to just baking it into that layer. Because you don't want to really work uh, destructively because it's a pain in the backside having to go back and redo things all the time. Yeah, it makes your image files a lot bigger, but at the end of the day, uh, I'd rather have full control over the image and just turn things off if I need to. So uh, what I normally do is again shift control alt and E to create a merge layer and then uh, create a smart object. Um, I have uh, actions up here that are really easy to do so uh, there's plenty of videos online showing you how to do actions. But if you want me to do a video on how to make actions, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, so to open up Camera Raw, which is what I use for color grading, uh, you can hold Shift, Control, and A. And here's Camera Raw. So uh, I use presets. I have created my own. Uh, no, I'm not going to sell them. So you know, don't be lazy. Make your own. Uh, the advantage of using Camera Raw is uh, once you've... Uh, finish the color grade, you can change the opacity, whereas if you do it in Lightroom, you can't change the opacity of the preset. So this way I've got complete manual control of what everything I want to do. Um, I have bought some presets down here below uh, before. Uh, I do recommend potentially buying presets if they're cheap, because uh, this way you can have a look through, see what people have done, and then just kind of get a, a gist of how each section of Lightroom uh, or camera all works. Um, but kind of tend to avoid using them in my own work. So I normally use this one, uh, Joe's. I, I am completely original in terms of cre <laughs> creating names. And then afterwards I come to the profile section. Uh, now you can create uh, profiles uh, using the color grades that you use in Photoshop. 
uh, there's a great tutorial done by Pix and Perfect, um, which I can link in the description below if you want to have a uh, look and check that one out. Um, so essentially, you just save them as I think it's a cube, and then you can uh, import them into Camera Raw. But then once you've uh, restarted Lightroom, all your profiles will appear there. So it's definitely useful if you want to create lots of different color grades and then once you've imported into Lightroom you can uh, add them on. But you also have uh, the, the amount slider as well. So you can add more and less which is really useful as opposed to using presets where you can't change the opacity without having to change the uh, individual uh, components. So if we come back, next will be in the uh, basic tab. So I'd like to pop up a bit more contrast and dehaze uh, and then bring up the blacks and the shadows a little bit uh, I can pump up the highlights and the whites and that's pretty much it for that bit and then I'll come down to the color mixer I just want to make the greens pop a little bit so I don't want to change the hue but I will come to luminance first bring that down and by popping, I'm just going to pump up the uh, saturation a little bit. And there we go. So it's pretty much my color grading. Um, so if I wanted to, if I thought it was a bit too much, as, uh, as I mentioned before, you can bring down the opacity to change stuff. But also remember as well, if you're not happy with the skin tone, if you create a layer mask, if you hold on Alt whilst you're clicking on it, makes a oh, so uh, here's the color grade. Um, if you feel it's gone too far, you can uh, bring down the opacity, and you know, and change it to how you like. Uh, See, I'm kind of happy with the green, but sometimes if you're not happy with the skin tone that comes out afterwards, what you can do is you uh, come down to the layer mask, and then you can paint away areas of the skin uh, or image where you don't want the color grade on. So for this, you can bring up the brush a little bit, and then paint off areas of the skin that you don't want it on. For example, but I'm going to delete the uh, layer mask because I'm uh, happy with how it came out. Uh, and then what I did afterwards, I created another uh, um, smart object and opened Camera Raw again just for um, doing the, the grain on the image. The reason why I did it that way is just in case I wanted to change the opacity of the um, color grade. Uh, I could do that, but also it would have affected the... Uh, grain so I wanted to keep that as a separate layer. Uh, so these are my kind of usual settings uh, for the grain. So you come in, for top of it on and off you can see the grain on the green area but you can also see it on the face it just gives a little bit of extra texture I feel uh, to the skin. So yeah here's uh, the final image. I hope you've uh, found this useful. Uh, again, if you want to leave any questions in the comment section below, I'll try and answer them for you. And uh, thanks for listening.